सासे कके बरतु नु सम रिकॉग्निशन ए डे दे पावर देयर और वार असेस What inspired you to make a sort of uh, a retelling of the kind of classic story of an immigrant coming home? It is a film for me about acceptation and going this journey through to the present. You know, trying to find a little bit of serenity with this big mystery we all got up on our, our head. What led you to choose uh, to choose such a, a, a particular lead actor in Saul Williams? While I was writing, I've seen a picture of Saul Williams on the web, on the, on the internet, and I thought this is him. And like, what he's doing, I think, is really difficult for an actor. Not using words. I didn't know at this time he he was about to speak a little bit French. You know, sometimes when you don't understand a language, you have even a deeper connection. For him, being in Senegal was. Special. I mean, every moment was really special. You know, part of the movie is just a kind of portrait of Dakar today, and I really wanted to have uh, this new fight of this new generation you know, standing, you know, standing up and say, "No, it's enough." Opening night of this uh, really terrific film series that explores the new wave in African cinema. The series is being presented by the Cinematheque in partnership with the University of British Columbia and specifically with African Studies, the African Studies program and the Lew Institute for Global Issues at UBC. Uh, please join me in welcoming uh, uh, to introduce the film the director of One Man's Show, Newton Aduaka. Um, of why you chose um, to do a film like this, set in France, as a Nigerian <laughs> director who's known for films, um, uh, made in another setting. What was sort of the motivation behind this particular story and the setting of it? Uh, quite a few African filmmakers live in, in Paris, and they tend to go off to do films, uh, you know, back home. And, and I wanted to do a film uh, where I live, and it's. Uh, very difficult to get a film, to get sort of get funding from the state, French state, to make a film as an African filmmaker in France. Um, so that it, that was that. So I, mean, I couldn't get the, I couldn't get funding to do that. So I just basically got got a bunch of friends together and um, put my my own money into the wedding. But it was uh, Emila Bosolombo is an actor uh, for me, a great actor, whom over, I've worked with over the past uh, ten. Ten years on different projects, but uh, we we just got talking and then we, we became very good friends. And part of it is, yeah, it's like the idea of a man who's um, you know very passionate about his work, who desperately echoes of a lot of things, um, you know, racism, uh, you know, psych most mostly psychological, mostly. Arakoze cyane mugenzi wanjye uhaye mikuru ubu ni ngewe inshuti yanyu mushiki wanyu Jacqueline na Mutoni ngiye kogeza aho ku mutekano wifashe mu rwa mukuru nkuko maze kumenyera buri saha Rero muri iki gitsi the genocide that occurred in 1994 and I'm wondering if you could tell us a little bit about why you chose to tell this story in this way why you structured it in this way and why you chose to so focus more on a sort of psychological aspect that we've never really seen on film before. Well, um, I didn't have um, the experience and the money to uh, make a war movie. Mm -hmm. And um, there have been so many, um, many films on the genocide. They, they all looked the same to me. And uh, they were all, all about what was happening in the genocide, the actual killings and a hero who keeps his sanity while everyone's going crazy around him. And I wasn't interested in that. I was interested in the, in the consequences and the psychological consequences because um, right before the genocide, the population of Rwanda was about six million and a half. And um, it is estimated that about a million died. And that they were all, most of them were killed with machetes. So that killing someone with a machete takes a lot of time. Right? It's, not, it's not easy to kill a person. Um, they were killed by over 300,000 people, at least. So all these people needed therapy, right? The entire country needed therapy. 
the entire population still needs therapy. Right? All these people, were, um, they, were, they all had major psychological um, scars. And um, so after, after the genocide, there were all these um, um, zombies just walking, you know, going around the streets. And we still have so many zombies. And we only had one qualified psychiatrist in the entire country at that moment. And uh, most of us would rely on family or the community. But when the trust has been broken, when uh, students uh, killed teachers and neighbors killed each other and uh, people killed their, uh, their brother-in-laws and sisters-in-laws uh, to such an extent that you, didn't, you, you, you had no one to support you emotionally. Canyons, Kagashins, where was the Shobra Kunchik? Where is the Shobra Kunchik? Do Wollen die das überhaupt? Aber die brauchen es doch. Woher? Wer sagt, dass die das brauchen? Ja, aber die müssen doch so entwickelt werden wie wir. Die müssen doch dieselben Möglichkeiten haben wie wir. Warum? Um, it began in 2008, when um, I, had, I, was, I had a kind of through sort of three picture dealish sort of thing with uh, Kleines Fernsehspiel, which is a part from uh, one of the state television uh, channels in Germany. Um, the commissioning editor asked me whether I wouldn't want to make a film about um, Senator Obama because all my other films uh, had always been about people from different um, cultural backgrounds. You know, um, although I, I could see that the interest uh, would be there, but since I don't know uh, Senator Obama, I don't feel... Because my films were always about people I know, actually, my friends. So um, I said, but I know uh, his sister very well and we went to school together and so on, so I could ask her if she would be interested in a film about our generation, because we were four African women in film school at the time when I was studying. It was Aoma Obama, it was Tidane Garemba, the Zimbabwe author, it was Wanjiro Kimanjui, who was also a Kenyan filmmaker and myself. And we were always discussing, you know, what could be our contribution to um, to film in general and to even films about African women and, and how are we going to navigate all these issues that we actually talk about.